times because these farmers could play so well, is they, they got scholarships to go to the college because they could play. Now, fortunately, when they did, they realized it was not gonna work because all the water they dug in the area was contaminated. It had oil, minerals. Yeah, so you're actually standing in one of the safest buildings in, in the whole city. Now, what you're standing in now is actually a real barn from the 1900s. This actually was once in a lumber yard alongside Whittier Boulevard. What we did, we took it apart and we rebuilt it inside the museum. Well, a fraction of the size, because we only fit so much in one, in one place. But, it once, but everything in here are all real tools. Everything in this, in this one section, these are all donated to the museum by Whittier residents. And these all actually belong to their families. Nothing here is a reproduction or a fake. These are all genuine real tools that have been used over the years by people's descent, by their ancestors and by their descendants. These are just all have such history to them and they've been all donated to the museum out of the goodness of wanting them to be on display for people to learn about what life was like during this early phase in your history. So things we have here, we have a blacksmith shop, we have hardware tools, we have craftsmanship. We have so many different things in here and they're just all have wonderful history to them. Now what we have here is actually Whittier's very first fire engine. Now, let's see, now not like you have today. This, this would have been all hand pulled. This is, this is from about the, about the 1890s. So, and so actually what you had then, because we were a small town, there was actually no fire department yet. So what you had was actually a community agreement and involvement to see the put out fires, which is why you had to actually lift and pull this by hand. And see, and this will be, just be filled with water. And what you had actually is, is, that, is a hand crank in, in order to pump out the water, and hopefully put out the fire before the house, the house or whatever burnt to rubble. Unfortunately, most, most times it did burn to rubble in the end. Now, one of the things people love when it comes to the museum, what they don't expect to find is actually this giant, it's a red trolley car. Now, this is what we call the Pacific Electric Railway. Now, these were actually installed all throughout the Los Angeles area. You see, now kind of like today where we have the metro system, these were what we were here before, and they ran on electricity. These were actually installed in the early 1900s, and they ran here up to the 1950s. Now, these, now this actually, now this actually one that belonged to Whittier, because you see above the Whittier line. Because back then, you could take one of these, the Whittier line, all the way into Los Angeles, and actually all the way to Malibu, you see, all within the day. You see, and these were a very efficient system for their era, you see, and they were very well known. Unfortunately, they were they stopped being used in the 1950s because cars came to full production and they took up the roads. Now, now the current metro system, metro train, the metro, let's see, the link, they're actually being built on the exact same paths these original ones used to take. So they're actually just they're just pretty much bringing back the same thing over again in a new fashion. One of the newest additions to the museum is actually this hallway, which we rededicated in honor of the Perry family. Now, the Perrys were the ones responsible for getting Nixon started into politics. And see, and one of those, and one of those major moments is in this giant, this see, photograph we've blown up with Richard Nixon, a very young Richard Nixon, in the center. So you can see meeting with all, with some very prominent individuals in, in see, in Whittier at the time. Among them is, let's see, Rex Kennedy, who is see, who is editor and publisher for the Whittier Daily News. You see, just far off from Nixon is Hugh and Herman Perry, who was in charge of the Bank of America at the time. And some other individuals here we have, let's see, we have Tom, we have Tom Bailey, a local lawyer. Let's see, and let's see, and uh, some other ones. We ha we have are actually see Hubert Perry, and see let's see Herman's son, who later on carried on the helping Nixon into politics. This this was this was taken in see in 1965. If you'd like to visit the Whittier Museum, you're welcome to join us. Let's see, admission is free it's for both parents and children. We are on, we are located on 6755 Newland Avenue, in the corner of Philadelphia and Newland. So in order to find us, just go down to Philadelphia and you'll see a, a, large, a large pale building with a colorful mural on the front. Just look for the, the red Corvette on the side. We are in see we're closed on Sundays and Mondays, but we are open the rest of the week for office hours on Tuesday to Friday from 9 to 4. For public tours, which are also free, Friday and Saturday, which are available from 1 to 4. And see all tours for both school or large groups are all free. It's an art, and we are a, a child-friendly exhibit. So please feel free to bring your kids. We actually have interactive exhibits which they can see, feel free to play with. Thank you for watching another episode of Discovering Whittier. If you're a business owner of, or know of somebody who would like to be on our next episode of Discovering Whittier, simply reach out to us at discoveringwhittier at gmail.com or give us a call at 562-756-6465. We'll see you soon. See you soon.